Well, my name's Jennifer Tridal. I'm with Rogue Ales. And I've been with Rogue for a little bit over, about a year and a half. Um, I'll tell you a little story about myself so you know who I am and where I come from. Um, I am actually originally from Iowa. I had moved away for about 20 years. I moved to Arizona and Colorado. And when I was down in Arizona, I was, thank you, I was with a distributor down in Arizona. And I actually um, sold to restaurants and bars like this in Tucson for 10 years. And uh, then moved into some management and was actually managing a beer portfolio at a distributor. Well, those of us that are familiar with kind of how the beer industry is these days, and if you're not, I'll tell you, um, there's lots of moving around of brands. Different distributors decided to get out of beer business and other bu then people have to buy it from them. It's franchised. So my distributor decided to actually get out of the beer business. So my position was essentially eliminated. And at that point in time, I was actually, Rogue was one of my brands that I was managing. And they kind of... Uh, realized I might be looking for a job and they were like, hey, why don't you come to Oregon and uh, interview with us? So long story short, here I am. <laughs> and it's been, a, it's been a lot of fun. I now live in Spirit Lake, Iowa, which is in Northwest Iowa. Does anybody know where that is, Okaboji? Anybody? Oh, I'm pretty far south, aren't I? No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> just kidding. That's my hometown. It's a town of 5,000 people. Was not where I intended on moving back, but moved back for family reasons, be closer to parents and a seven-year-old niece who I adore, and put me in this, whole, this little town. So the cool thing is that I get to travel around to places like St. Louis, which I love. This is such a cool city. Um, I've been here now for a week, pretty much. Missouri, I was Springfield, Columbia, and then, and then St. Louis since Thursday. So it's been a lot of fun. But, um, you know, my first introduction to craft beer was actually when I lived in Colorado. I had this little beer called Fat Tire. Beer, I'm sure we've heard of it. Um, so I lived in Boulder for a while, and then I actually moved up to Fort Collins. And I'm kind of kicking myself now, because back then, I mean, this would have been 96, 97, 98. And, you know, I really, I liked beer, but I wasn't into going to visit the breweries and all of that. And so moved away and never went to go visit New Belgium. But I'll get back there someday. So that's kind of, that was my first craft beer. And the really cool thing about Rogue, I mean, I, I can't tell you how many times people have either seen my sticker on the back of my computer when I'm working in an airport, and they're like, oh my gosh, Rogue Dead Guy was my first craft beer. So for those of you that aren't familiar with Rogue, a reason for that is because we've been around for 29 years. We have our, um, our roots are Oregon. We're 100% Oregon. We do as much as we can to represent the state um, in every product that we do. If there's a way to do it, we're going to do it. So, little history, and I do have some fun videos I'll show you in a little bit, but um, a little history about Rogue. Does anybody have an idea of, does anybody know the story of Rogue and how we got started? Anybody? Cool. It's all like newbies. It's awesome. <laughs> so, other things in Oregon, right? There's a big company called Nike. <laughs> I know we've all heard of that. Jack Joyce is one of our founders, and Jack Joyce and his, uh, there was a group of uh, guys that were attorneys for Nike, back in the day when they were starting to sign up athletes and do all of that thing, all that stuff. And they actually kind of had a regime change, you could say. And this group of um, rogues, they called them because they were leaving, decided to leave Nike, took a severance, and they were like, we're out of here. So Jack and his friends were approached by a couple guys that actually wanted to open a brew pub. And these guys, Jack and the group were going to be silent parties and just invest and support this. So about a year goes by, and the guys kind of started to lose their shirts a little. They weren't, you know, the business wasn't going so well. So Jack and the group stepped in and said, hey, you know what, we're going to make this, we're going to take this over and we're going to actually make this an actual brew pub, a brewery, sorry, a brewery. So that was in 87 was when that uh, brew pub opened in Ashland. So 88, early, early 88, Jack goes on this venture to find a place for our brewery. And okay, now how many people have been to Oregon? Anybody? Okay, that's better. Now we're getting somewhere. Just kidding. Um, so Jack ends up in Newport. He's from Corvallis, which is where Oregon State is. And it's kind of like just a little bit south of Salem, south and, and west. So he ends up in Newport. And Newport's right on the ocean. It's, it's, a, mar it's a marine town, huge golf and, um, I'm sorry, shrimp and crab fishing port. And um, the way that Newport's set up is that if you get down on the bayfront, it's beautiful. But it's all uphill up there to, to go back up away from the, the, the bay front. So what happens, of course, we're talking Oregon, and it starts to snow, and he gets stuck in a snowstorm down in the bay front. 
So if anybody's been to Newport and, oh, thank you. If anybody's been to Newport, there's a place called Mo's Seafood. Has anybody heard of that? Okay. So Mo Nimi was our first landlord. So this is what happened. Jack ends up snowed in at Mo's Seafood. And she's like, Jack, what are you, what are you doing here in Newport? He's like, well, I'm searching for a place for us to have a brewery. She said, well, you know, I've always wanted to uh, live above a brewery. I actually have the perfect apartment. It's, it's got this open garage right beneath it, and it might be the perfect space for you. So they checked it out, and sure enough, that became our first home. She actually leased it to us for free, which was cool. <laughs> Back then, of course, anytime free is good. But he sh she had two conditions. One condition was that... Um, when times are good, you know, when everything's flowing and everything's great, you know, participate with your community. Make sure that you're, you know, giving back and you're able to do that. And then when times are bad, be sure you're making sure that our fishermen are fed. So because of that, about 30 cents per case of what we create, everything we do goes back to charity, um, just as a general, general rule of thumb, which is kind of cool. So that was her first condition. Her second condition was that we hang this Beautiful picture, and I'll have to pull that up so you guys can see it, but it's a beautiful picture of Mo in a bathtub, and it's not what you're thinking. There's no champagne or bubbles. It's just this cute little old lady in a bathtub above our bar. So we have about 10 pubs on the, on the West Coast, and going from Seattle all the way down to San Francisco, and she is probably, it's about this big too. It's not a small picture. It's Mo in the bathtub behind the bar. So that's a little story about our, our beginnings. Um, and I'm going to show you a quick video. You do have Dead Guy in your glass. This beer, I'm going to tell you a little about it real quick since you're drinking it. This is our, this beer is over 25 years old. Um, it was actually created for a Day of the Dead event in Portland. And people liked it so much that it just kind of hung around. And that was over 25 years ago. And this beer has definitely earned its keep. It's won lots of awards. Um, the style of the beer, it's a Maybach style ale. So that might be a little confusing because it's a Maybach and an ale, but that's how John Meyer works. He likes to do things the way he likes to do things. <laughs> so you do get some nice malty notes, a little touch of honey. It's about 6.7% um, ABV and about 55 IBU. So with, with it being a Maybach style, it means a Bach, a Bach is a nice malty kind of German style beer. And what a Maybach is, Maybachs are meant to be drank in May, hence my. And they're just a little bit hoppier than your normal Bach. So this is our Dead Guy Ale. Cheers. All right, we're going to watch a video first here. Well, video about Rogue. So something, uh, so a Rogue. Was, so we've got uh, our, oh, oh. born in the ghetto. Oh, uh, <laughs> I'm like, who's talking? Not on the wrong that was side weird. of the tracks. So. That was funny. <laughs> I was born on the tracks. Like the, the, it's like the voice of... Yeah, I've it's like the voice of Jack Joyce coming to haunt me right now. He's like, what are you doing? <laughs> so I'm going to leave it right there. That's Jack. Yeah. So this is, this is going to be our... <laughs> that's like perfect, actually. Um, that, Jack Joyce is our founder, of course, that I was talking about. And that, you'll, this is a, it's a little bit longer video, but I think that what it'll do is give you a really good feeling about him in general. And his son is now our president or our CEO. So it's still in the family. We're still privately owned. We're not going anywhere. We're still independent rogue. But um, what I was going to say is that we have, and I'll get into this in a little bit as well, we also have a farm in Independence, Oregon that we're super proud of. That's a thousand acre farm that we actually have 10 varieties of hops that we're growing, jalapenos. We smoke our jalapenos for our chipotle, ales and whiskeys. We have um, marionberries and hazelnuts and we do pumpkins. We actually have um, over 119 colonies of honeybees, a beekeeper. I mean, and it's actually where the, the hops all get harvested. So it's a really beautiful place. And it's right on the Willamette River, which it pretty much winds around the farm. So everything that we do is salmon safe, which is, I think, better than organic sometimes. <laughs> you know, let's keep those fish nice and healthy. So I'm going to show you this video as well. And I think we can pour, are we pouring the next beer yet? Or, I mean, take your time. Obviously, you guys know what you're doing. I'm just going to talk. <laughs> All right, so now he can, we'll let Jack come back to life here. I've always been a street kid. Hate That's correct. Yes, so I'm going to talk about our farms. Um, as I mentioned a little bit before, we've got the 10 varieties. So 10 varieties of hops. So a few years ago, there was a hop shortage in the beer industry. And John Meyer, you know, he, like I said, he's been our brewer since, the, since 88, since 87, 88. And he actually won, just to give you a little history on John, one home brewer of the year back in 1987 for his barley wine, 
which is actually, we still make that beer to this day. It's our XS, XS uh, crustacean barley wine, old crustacean barley wine. It comes in a big black bottle. So if you see it, that's his, that's his recipe. It's a 30-year-old recipe, which is pretty amazing. But, um, you know, we like to give John what he wants, what he needs to do to, to, to make the beers that, you know, he has. I mean, we've had, a, we've had over 1,800 awards on our beers, so I think he's got the right idea. So we want to let him keep doing his thing. So part of that was taking control of our own destiny and um, really putting focus onto this farm. So that's when he decided, you know, let's really focus on the hops. Um, we had a few hops that we, that we, we had seven hops planted and then we planted about three more and now we planted two more. So we have 10 total. I'm sorry, that would be 12, but 10 total. <laughs> two more were just planted a couple years ago. And uh, that way we just want to, we want to control it. We want to do it. It's kind of a do it yourself. Um, we have Cheryl, who is our beer farmer. She's out there at the farm. There is a tasting room out there. So if you ever get out to Oregon, you can, the cool thing about it is you can taste some beer, go jump in the river. Like I said, the Willamette's right there. Go taste some more beer, go walk through the hops. Go just, <laughs> you, you get the idea. So it's a lot of fun. Definitely a lot of fun. So we're going to move on to, I've got a couple, do you like the videos? They're kind of fun little videos. It's, uh, we definitely have a lot of fun, you know, with our history with Nike. We actually have some ties to Adidas as well. Both of our marketing guys, they're actually brothers. Um, their father was part of that group that left Nike, and then he actually went to Adidas, but they all, they have these Adidas ties as well. So um, lots of marketing, and you can understand why marketing becomes a big piece of it. Um, for a while there, I think we actually had more marketing people than salespeople, but <laughs> it's flipping around a little bit. So now we have to have more salespeople. So what we have now here is our six hop IPA. And uh, I'll talk a little bit about our hop series. So like I said, the seven hop had been out for a few years and then we actually released our hop series about a year ago, a little over a year ago, January. And it was a four, six, seven, and eight. And that represented a couple things. First thing was how many different types of hops were in the beer. So the four had four, six had six, you get the idea. Also, the um, ABV was progressive. So the four was 4.4%. It's like a session style, easy drinking, light, about 55 IBU. The six here jumps up to 87 IBU. So we call it a bold, beautiful bite. It definitely lets those hops shine. And it's only 6.6% .6 ABV. So it's nice and refreshing. And this, the reason we put this one in our cans, um, we put, picked two beers to start with. The Dead Guy Ale we had to do in cans. And we love that new package with just the skeleton. But Six Hop, this is actually the number one of uh, our hop family beers purchased by our consumers at our pubs. So we're like, okay, um, those get the, the pubs and our consumers there, those are our guinea pigs. They tell us what's going to be good and what's, you know, we, we follow their suggestions. So that's where the Six Hop, that's how the Six Hop ended up in the can. So the Seven Hop is, as you know, seven types, 7.7%. .7%. Told you we have a good marketing department. And it happens to work with the brewery. And that one's about 76 IBU, and then the eight is 8.8, .8, eight different types and 80 IBU. So progressively get bigger, and uh, that eight hops, of course, more like an imperial IPA. Yes? Yes, it does. It does. <laughs> it does say that, yes. Yes. It might, it might change eventually, we'll see. It's a good conversation piece though, right? Uh-huh, yeah. <laughs> so, um, so like I said, at the, at the farm, we, that is actually where we do all the harvesting of the hops as well. And has anybody ever seen that process done? Who hasn't? Oh, you're in luck because I have a video. <laughs> oh, my God. That's amazing. <laughs> um, something about the, the brewery that we're in now. So I know I mentioned earlier we, we actually were in uh, the little, the basement below Mo's apartments. In 1992, we moved over to, like I said, it's a marina. So we actually moved over to an old boat storage shed. Um, the marina finally decided to put slips into the marina so people could put their boats in the slips. And nobody wanted to use the shed, so it was actually sitting there empty. And so in 1992, we took over this massive shed, and that is now where our brewery is. If you remember seeing that big red silo, you walk through that to get into our brewery. Um, that silo, back to kind of us liking to recycle things, was given to us. This guy was like, hey, I've got this silo on, on my tractor trailer. It's been sitting there for two years. Do you want it? <laughs> and of course, our VP of sales was like, yes. So they brought it to the brewery. They hoist, you know, put it up. 
And as you can imagine, it kind of stands out along the shoreline. So we had to do some finagling to let them actually let us keep it. Um, the funny thing is, a little funny story is that, so Jack Joyce, of course, we, and we called a lot of those quotes that he says, we call those Joycisms, because um, they truly are. There are things that he would say all the time, and they're kind of posted all over our, our office. But um, he had this pink truck that he drove, and that was his truck. And on the side, it says, you can call me Joyce. It's pretty funny. Anyway, somehow, be after we actually got that silo approved, um, that pink truck ended up on top of the silo. Somebody had, as a joke, to the city, said, oh, okay, we can keep it. Put the pink truck on top of the silo. Well, we had to take that down, of course. So anyway, funny story about that. But um, in the brewery, so we've actually expanded now um, 27,000 square feet um, away from this, the boat. I mean, it's attached to the boat storage shed. But at, um, that's where our canning line is. So we, we've just finished that ex expansion this past fall. So it's it's taken up a lot of, it's a, there's a lot of room over there though, which is really great. Um, also across our parking lot is our distillery where we, um, of course we make our spirits and we have a, um, a cooperage. We're making our own barrels. We have two coopers that work for us now and I'll get into a little more video. Uh, yes, I have a video on that as well. <laughs> so this next beer we have is our Promise Gone Awry. This is a farm beer as well. So the six hop is farm, a farm beer. This is a farm beer. And um, in addition to our farm in Independence, Oregon, we have a farm in the Thai Valley, and that's a little bit further east. And on that farm, um, Eric is our barley farmer, but we have barley and rye. And Eric is the one that does all the hand malting. He hand mal malts everything that we produce. And yeah, he's surprised he's still married because he's out there, you know, for eight days at a time and he can't leave because he has to keep flipping the, 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 the malt. So this, yes. We do buy, we do buy. About 50% of our, what we call kind of legends, like Dead Guy Ale, 50% of those products that are in that beer we do make, but about 50% we have to purchase. But we do try to keep it Oregon if we can. Um, we do have some things that are imported, but not a whole lot. Yeah, so, but anything that's farm products, anything that's a farm, like this is our promise gone awry from the farms. This is 100% from the farm. So this is rye from the farm. Um, this was actually created, the reason it's called Promise Gone Awry um, every year for Christmas, John Meyer they puts together a beer that's just for the salespeople. You know, it's our little special thank you. And so um, they were able to produce this beer and enough of it to give the sales force a, a rye beer, this beautiful red rye IPA, and promised that it would never be released nationwide. Well, yeah, so clearly <laughs> he broke his promise. But what, we were having problems with um, infestations with our rye fields, and they finally figured out how to com combat that, and they were able to produce this. So now it's called Promise Gone Awry. And um, beautiful red rye ale, and I have to cheat a little bit on the, the facts here. But it is 7.5% ABV and 70 IBU. So it's nicely, nicely balanced. What do you guys think? It's good, isn't it? Yeah. We also make a rye whiskey, which is really beautiful. Um, if there's any rye whiskey fans in here as well. Find, a, find about all of that and try to try it out. And um, there's a, um, when I, we have a hop and oyster festival every year because guess what? We have lots of hops and oysters and you get to go out and see the farm and see the harvest and then go down to Newport and they've got, they've been, they've got these oysters all shucked and all oh, they're beautiful. If you love oysters, you got to get out to Newport. But, um, I was able to go there as I was working for the distributor. This was actually before, just before I got hired, and that was my first trip ever to Oregon. And um, it was absolutely beautiful. But we got to go to the farm. We actually got to machete chop our pumpkins because um, it's, during, it's during harvest, so we had all the pumpkins. We wait. Our pumpkin beer comes out a little bit later and we, because we wait for Mother Nature to tell us when it's ready to be drank or to be picked, actually. Yeah. So it comes out, usually, you know, it could can, can get into September, which, you know, the way that the trends are now, we start seeing pumpkin, I think, in July. <laughs> pumpkin, salsa, pumpkin, everything, right? Um, we get a little bit over pumpkinized, I think. But this, if you ever have a chance to see our pumpkin beer, um, it's, it's amazing. Um, but, yeah, they actually machete chop the pumpkins um, into small pieces, and they roast it in this 
old pizza oven that we have at the brewery. <laughs> and uh, that's where it gets roasted. And then we get to throw it, we threw it into the, into the fermentation tanks. So that was a lot of fun. Um, something else that we do at the farm, uh, we have a, a beer called Fresh Roast. And Fresh Roast sounds like a coffee, of course. And it's a farm beer. So all of the barley, again, comes from the farms. At the brewery, we also have an old coffee bean roaster that we acquired. And that is actually uh, where we hand roast the barley for this fresh roast beer. They say they almost caught the brewery on fire when they first were trying to figure this out. <laughs> Luckily, they didn't. But um, yeah, that, that's, a, that's a really fun beer to try as well if you ever get to see that. So I think right now we've got our double chocolate. So while we're finishing this one, I'm going to let the video play. Um, our other chocolate beer is about 5.7-ish. So um, lots more malt, lots more chocolate. It's Dutch chocolate that they use. And uh, we make this kind of painted bottle line. We've got about five beers or so that we make in that line, five or six beers. And they come out once a year um, for special occasions. We call them, instead of a special release, we like to call them occasions. So what do you guys think of this beer? It's good, isn't it? Mmm. Yeah, that's awesome. Need some like German chocolate cake with that one. Yeah. Or anything. Or anything. Yeah, <laughs> or popcorn. Just kidding. <laughs> so I think that's our last beer that we're trying. How are we doing on time here? We're good. Okay. Because I have a couple more videos. <laughs> yeah, so I'm going to introduce you. I know we're not tasting our spirits, but I'm going to show you a little video about our, our cooperage. So does anybody know what a cooperage, who doesn't know what a cooperage is? Anybody? Okay, so a cooperage is a, is a traditional old like Renaissance job of making the barrels. So the cooperage is where the barrels are made. Coopers, and I'm talking like, you know, wine barrels, oak barrels, the big oak barrels. Um, a cooper is the guy that actually makes our barrels. So again, wanting to really control our destiny, they were like, you know, it'd be kind of cool if we could get our hands on some cooperage equipment. <laughs> That's an interesting thing to go look for, right, to shop for. Well, they happened to get a lead on some old World War II era equipment in Canada. And they were like, okay, well, we think it's kind of already been sold. So Brett Joyce and Jim Klein, so our VP of sales and our CEO, beeline it to Canada and kind of talk the guys and finagle it and, and, and buy the equipment. So again, ready, right, ready, fire, aim. So they're like, okay, um, where, are we, where are we gonna put this equipment? So they got it down to Newport, and they're like, where are we gonna put it? So they actually built a building right next to our distillery, and we've been distilling um, for about 10 years. We started, we were actually the first uh, rum distiller in Oregon. We started with a dark rum, and a, we had a white rum, a dark rum, and we'd make a hazelnut rum. And anyway, that distillery is now near the brewery, so they built this next to it. Then of course they're like, well, Who's going to make the barrels? You can't really put an ad on Craigslist for a cooper. So Nate Lindquist, who is employee number five, maybe he was hired after John, but uh, he volunteered to go do an apprenticeship at Oregon Barrel Works in McMinnville, Oregon, for 18 months and learn how to create these barrels. And as you'll see, he's a really interesting character. But, I mean, we literally, we get the, we get the staves, I believe they get the staves in. They might even, I don't think they cut the staves. But we get the staves in, and they, they literally line up the staves. They look for the imperfections, whole nine yards. So they put it into the hoop press, which helps to form the barrel. I mean, and you'll, you'll see the whole nine yards here. So it's really cool. So Rolling Thunder, if you remember me talking about the guy that was the marketing guy whose sons now work at Rogue, well, his nickname in the marketing department was Rolling Thunder. And we don't call our marketing department marketing. We call it Unique Thunder. Because what marketing really is, is you want to be unique and you want to make an impact. So it's a unique thunder. So Rolling Thunder was his nickname because he would come in and it was like you knew he was coming and things were going to happen. So this is a quick little video about that. Um, Barrel-aged beer from our own lineup. It was called Rolling Thunder Russian Imperial Stout. It'll come out once a year. It's super limited. Um, it comes in a liter bottle. And we made 756 packs for the world. <laughs> but we actually got quite a few here in Missouri. We took care of you, I think. So it was good. Um, but if you see a bottle of that, it's, it's awesome. It's 11.5%. So it's a doozy. 
But uh, that, if you saw the, the guy's face on the, on the logo, that's, that was the actual the guy um, for Rolling Thunder. So this is actually just a cute little thing about meeting our stills. So this is Jake Holshue. He's our master distiller. And we actually make four whiskeys, two gins, two rums, and two um, vodkas. So we make a dead guy whiskey. And when we got into the whiskey business, we realized, you know, hey, most whiskeys start out as a beer, so we might as well use dead guy. So what we literally do is we take the mash tun from the dead guy. So when we've done the brewing of the dead guy, we take that and we move it over and um, we put that into our, distiller, into our, our, um, our stills and distill it into dead guy whiskey. Um, there's some of it on the market right now. When we first started bottling it, it only had a month of aging on it. But if you try it, you'll, you'll never believe it. I've, t I've tasted people and it tastes like it's got like a year or two easy on it. Now everything that leaves our brewery has at least two years of aging. Um, so we make a Chipotle whiskey, we make a single malt whiskey, we make a rye whiskey, as I was mentioning earlier. We also do a couple gins that are um, using farm products. They have about, I think it's 100 um, pounds of cucumbers per batch, and they're spruce gins, which is really Oregon. So that's, um, if you have a chance to try our spirits, I know we don't have them here tonight, but give them a shot. Uh, but this is, I love this beer, and, uh, and Dead Guy and I go back a long way, because uh, just briefly, before we give away stuff, I used to live in Colorado for eight years, and I lived in a little town called Nederland, Colorado. Have you been there? And so we have a little festival called uh, the Frozen Dead Guy Days, and it's about a, an, an old grandpa that's buried in the ground, and he's frozen, or at least he was frozen at one time, and his nephew puts dry ice on him every month, and it's the weirdest thing. Anyway... When I lived there, uh, I was on the Chamber of Commerce, and we came up with this brilliant idea of having a festival around this dead guy in the, in the, in the ground. And so we did. And of course, we talked to Rogue about being a, a main sponsor of the event, and they have been ever since. I think they still are. I've been here yeah. for several years, but I'm have sure. you been to that event? I haven't. I actually just you heard about that. You guys are ever in Nederland, Colorado. It's in March, so it's, it's cold outside. It's kind of like the ice carnival we do here in the Loop. Uh, but it's called Frozen Dead Guy Days. <laughs> and they do limousine tours like up to the shed where he's buried. It's just awesome. Anyway, okay. Let's give <laughs> I'm not kidding. I've heard about that. There's That's a uh, awesome. YouTube video, which maybe sometime when we have extra time, we will watch it just for fun and we'll drink some Dead Guy. Uh, it's called Grandpa's in the Tough Shed. <laughs> and it's actually, I mean, it's like a real movie uh, document, a documentary. I guess that would be what it is. Uh, but Tough Shed heard about Grandpa and the fact that he was just buried in the ground, so they uh, donated a shed to put like at the top of the shaft where he where he where he is, and so now he's got his own shed. So oh my gosh! Grandpa's in the Tough Shed. Yeah. That's 